We are Things I Found Online, starring Larry Morgan, Lisa Arch, and Louise <laughs> Palanker, <laughs> with special guest, Jamie Alcroft. Yay! It's Jamie. Beware, radio legends are exploring the internet. Louise. <laughs> That's... That's sad. Makes me sad because Joe's not here. We love you, Joe, and Joe will be back next week. That Joe was Cipriano, the everybody. Closest thing to a Joe Cipriano uh, impression so I can do. You did really well. So our guest in the studio was Jamie Alcroft. He's a famous comedian, voiceover artist, talent, actor, thank singer, you. dancer. Thank you very much. And thank you, boys. Thank you, boys. The first thing we do, Jamie, <laughs> to initiate our guests is we Google you. So oh, I hope ooh. you've cleaned up that SEO. Do I have to stand up for this, or can I be uh, seated while you, I'm being you, you Googled? You have to be seated, I but I will need the date of your last period. Okay. Uh, <laughs> can you Google Jamie? Okay. So look, it's Jamie Alcroft. Oh, there I am. Very professional. Yeah, nice. And if you read over, I, I like it when people have that thing that pops up to the right, and I'm not sure what makes that happen. What sort of Google magic gives you? You have to be you famous. Pay a lot oh, of money. you don't. Pay yeah, you got to be famous to have a lot, lot of, and have a, or like yeah. have killed someone, and then there's ah. just a bunch of pictures of you that yeah. they and mosaic ooh, together. Ooh, and let's, let's Google uh, Richard Speck next. No, because mm. that's no, not. Okay. We would go off. See, that's how easy it is to go down a rabbit hole. Yes. On this show. So just, true. just by you know, just, just talking by about from serial Jamie killers. Alcroft to Richard Speck, yeah. <laughs> it's a natural so, progression. I'm a serial eater. That's if about you, it. If you're reading your screen, it says Jamie Alcroft is an American comedian and voice actor. He is known for his voiceover work in video games, movies, and TV shows, and was half of the comedy duo Mac and Jamie. How, how do you buy him out so that you can be whole of the comedy duo? <laughs> No, it, I can't. I you can't. can't. No, no. And I, I wouldn't want to. That's no. forever, I think. Yeah, yeah. It was a shared experience. It sure was. So, Jamie, I, talk a little bit about Mac and Jamie. I, I, we're all familiar because we are kind of like the core of this team is from Premier Radio, and we did Premier Radio together. And, Jamie, you are a part of that history with us. Yes, I was uh, audiovisual. So, audio is Julio <laughs> Copter and audiovisual. But and the I accent, digest. <laughs> and, the, and the show was called Accent on Accent. Yes. And they taught people how to speak English, although they did not know themselves. No, we were not certain. And you, my friend, for bringing that up in the conversationals, are as kind as the day is hung. You really are. <laughs> it, 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 I, I'm getting goosebumps on the openings of my skin and the hair follicles from your worlds of pure poultry. But I digest once again. <laughs> I, I feel if I just touch one person every day, I don't have to touch myself quite so frequently. <laughs> Can you do the one about where, you're, where, you ha where you go shoe shopping? Shoe shopping? Yes. I don't remember that one. You would say, well, you need to choose, choose because choose, you choose. have two feet. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's really funny. You need to choose because you have two feet. That's, right. That's that was, awesome. I got to tell you a little bit about that line, uh, if I just touch one person every day. Uh, I, we introduced Clint Eastwood. At the big uh, Boys and Girls Club banquet up oh, in Carmel wow. once. Yeah. And, uh, well, we did our stand-up. We did like 20, 25 minutes. And it was all his friends, luminaries in the audience because of the big golf tournament. Oh, you know? he knows some famous people. Yeah. He and uh, he was out there with his, uh, I don't know, fifth, sixth wife. I'm not sure. sure. Who's counting? And, yeah. And um, we said, uh, hey, you know, Clint's a sweetheart. He said to me just uh, before the show, he said, Jamie, I feel if I just touch one person every day, I don't have to touch myself quite so frequently. <laughs> After the show, he came up to me and he said, you guys are really funny tonight. But, you know, for the rest of my life, whenever I touch myself, I'm going to think of you. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> just, is disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. Ominous moment. <laughs> <laughs> it really wow. truly is. So what's the beginning of Mac and Jamie? Because so many comedians find that it's difficult enough to figure out how to talk by themselves. Mm -hmm. But you two decided, well, we're going to throw in together. So How, how big were te uh, comedy teams when you guys it started? It was just the Smothers Brothers and um, uh, Buddy and Bobby were out of New York, and uh, I didn't know that. And I know Rick Overton was part of a comedy team at one point with Jimmy Samuels, I think. And it was Roger and Roger. And Roger and Roger, oh, that's wow. right. Wow. And, it seems but, like that was kind of an old school thing that had gone out of fashion. It was an old school thing, and we tried to reinvent it. Yeah. Because it was usually the, the tall guy and the short guy, the fat guy, the skinny guy, yeah. the smart guy, the dumb guy. The straight guy, the wacky and we guy. Tried to, we tried to just be two really smart guys talking about comedy and we bounce off you know at one moment i'd be the stupid one next moment mac would be the stupid one yeah. i'd be the straight man he'd be the straight man we'd switch on and off when i taped my face with scotch tape mac was the straight man yeah you know when when we read out of the storybook i was a straight man because i was trying to 
get through. You're trying to, the straight man tries to get from the beginning to the end yeah. without any interruption. And the, the, the second banana, as they're called in the business, is always trying to interrupt and just put the kibosh on whatever you're trying to do. Now, I was a radio DJ in Key West, Florida, wonderful Key West, Florida, WKWF, and I was the morning guy. And being the morning guy in Key West was a unique experience because most people in Key West in the morning were just coming home. Yeah. You know, in those days. <laughs> That's hilarious. It, it, it's true. So you basically played. So you're doing like a night show. Yeah, for you those basically folks. played a night show. Oh, that's why. And starting at 6 a.m. And around 1030, you wanted to mellow it out because they were trying to get to sleep. <laughs> you know? That's so, awesome. Yeah. yeah. So um, walk of gotta, shame radio. That's got to be like the way <laughs> Vegas must be, too. Yeah. It, it must be. You're it playing to be. a lot of people who are just starting to settle I down. I know. I know. So um, and I had gone in because I got into the radio station. I said, your music's great. I love your music, but your commercials are just terrible. They're just awful. And I do voices and stuff and I can help you out. And so he said, okay, can you start tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> sure. He wow. said, we'll be here at five o'clock and we'll show you how to use the board. I said, what? Wow. He said, well, you'll be our morning guy and then you'll be the production manager. And boom, just like that, I was on radio. So after about two years on the radio in Key West, I got a note one day when I got off the air. It said, you must be one of the funniest men in Key West. I'm the other one. Mac Dryden. Oh, wow. Whoa. He gave me his address because nobody had phones in those days. This yeah. was 76 in Key West. You just, everybody just rode bikes and everybody was a vegetarian. There was no, <laughs> we hadn't gone to glu gluten or lactose intolerant yet. Yeah. You were still on you vegetarian. Know, we were still on just the vegetarian. Yeah. We were starting off slowly. Sure. And I remained a pescatarian to this day. 47 years I've been a pescatarian. Oh. Yeah, I eat fish. I just don't eat anything that blinks. That's my rule. <laughs> and I mean, you know. That's, it's a simple rule. <laughs> That's that is simple. Yeah. yeah. Very, very simple. And um, so I hooked up with Mac and he said, I want to do a show. I want to do it like a Saturday Night Live variety show. So we created this thing called Vital Signs. Now, what was he? Was he doing comedy? He was a cartoonist, a an cartoonist. illustrator. Oh, and wow. I had had, for years, I had had the Mac Dryden cartoon calendar on my kitchen what? wall. I thought this so guy. you knew who he was. I thought he was in his 50s. I didn't know him. But eventually I, he was. His, yeah. Yes, his, eventually he did. He so did that make did it come to the to 50s. Pass. Yes. Oh, yeah. So you had a vision. Yeah. yeah. So we got together and we did this show, and then it was a huge success. I mean, there were just hundreds of bicycles out in front of the theater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love this whole story. We sold really out. We sold out, and then. So wait, how long did it take you to to create and write the show before you did it? Oh, uh, a couple months. A okay. month. A month. So you and then guys... we cast it locally. Okay. You know, and, and we... Um, so you immediately had a chemistry. Immediately had a chemistry. Wow. And the thing that you have was... to keep in mind about a comedy duo, or specifically this comedy duo, because I'm not as familiar with the others. <laughs> Sorry, Abbott, Costello. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's, it is like a, a, a singing or vocal group. I mean, there are harmonies and there's timing and there's yeah. enunciation and you have to be completely in sync Absolutely. And in harmony with that other guy. And they these guys mastered it. Wow. I mean, so we're going to play a clip to give you an oh, idea. Goody, oh, goody. Uh, oh, okay. And this is one. I picked the folk parody because it just oh, makes God. me giggle. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, come by, Marie. Hear the wind blow for me. I'm not tired and I'm not going anywhere. Man. <laughs> Mr. Marie and Mr. Bojangles. Said to me, well, the answer is blowing in the rain. How many times do I have to turn my face? Oh, Lordy, turn, 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 Mr. Tambourine and Mr. Bojangles said to me, yes, the answer is blowing in the rain. I ask you, man, do you know? I said the answer is blowing in the rain. Oh, yes, the answer is blowing in the rain. <laughs> 
That is moving. Wow. Where was that? What was that from? That Never changed. hit the charts. Oh. Never hit the charts. That was from our, our uh, TV series Comedy Break. We did 125 right. half-hour episodes of that sucker. That aired with, where? Uh, was it syndicated? Uh, it was syndicated. Yeah. Wow. So it was on Channel 5 here in L.A. Yeah. Uh, we were on at 11.30, but we were cutting into Johnny's monologue. And Johnny owned KTLA at the time, so he moved us to about one third. We, oh we were sandwiched God. between Odd Couple and Rat Patrol. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a that's sweet a good, spot. That's now, a yeah. <laughs> now in, in Denver, they put us on at 10 p.m. opposite the local news, and we used to go sell out shows at the Rainbow Music yeah. Hall in Denver, 5,000, 8,000 oh, seats. Oh, my God. It, it all depends on where you're placed by the local stations, whether yeah. you're, you're a hit or not. In, in uh, Pascagoula, Mississippi, we're huge. Oh, that's where oh. Mac, Mac is from, that. That's, well, he's from Moss Point. Yeah, but. That's a fur cry he's from He's a hometown boy for them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we went, we went to Bluxy, played the Sanger Theater in Bluxy. You, I love you it. did the whole traditional did, circuit, right? You yeah. did oh, everything. Over over well, again. we did, you know, Caesar's Palace with Diana Ross for six years. Yeah. Oh, and, my gosh. Uh, did you have to that call was her Miss Ross? Yes, we did. Okay. But happily. And the, the funny thing is <laughs> I think now. You kind of want to, don't the you? The funny, a little bit of. Uh, uh, contemporary uh, uh, references is that uh, Tracy Ellis Ross yes. who's on Blackish yes. was the little 14 year old girl that used to come in and say you change your routine tonight I'm going to tell my mom <laughs> oh, because, wow. because Miss Ross was very particular, particular yeah. she I, I must oh. have seen her 400 times in concert she never changed the order of the songs or anything she wow. said never changed her ad libs or anything so you guys sorry were Diana to, I'm giving to... it all away yeah. but she was adamant about us if it works it works wow. don't change it wow. and oh, we got funny. you know after six years you get bored you get bored yeah, yeah. and you want to change up and throw some new jokes in and sure yeah. well also you, you guys are good at, at improv too oh, i mean to improv, you love to play around but, a little bit nah, 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 nah. so i look oh, at tracy on blackish narc. Right. but anyway, <laughs> anyway anyway we we um we were in key west and uh, i had been a jeweler there i had a very successful jewelry store in duval street and while he, you were on the radio yeah yeah i'd get off the air and and go hang out at the beach and then i'd go into the studio and make jewelry till you know 10 o'clock at night and once again i am the then, laziest person yeah. alive. <laughs> i'm right there with you I, i'd be well, like i, I have it. a radio show i thought i'm done any yeah. jewelry today <laughs> uh, I, I was in radio when you could do four hours and and then go home and nap and goof off and right. that's yeah. exactly what i did right when yeah. i had right. that chance yeah. I, was, I didn't have a second business going on. No. Oh, well, I did. I did. Oh, Amazing. That was fun. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's a skill. Yeah. That's like you were probably making yeah. more money at the jewelry store than on the oh, radio. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, I'm bad. Well, Paul Lynn came in one day, and, you know, Paul hung out in Key West, <laughs> of course, in the 70s. Are you kidding me? And <laughs> he walked in and he looked in the, in, the, in the booth where I had all my jewelry, and he pointed at this belt buckle, and he said, Oh, I love that buckle. <laughs> and it, 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 impressionist dream come true. Of course. I got to do him to him. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. And I said, I call it my quick release. <laughs> and I, I pulled it out and I showed it to him. And it was a belt We're buckle. We're talking a buckle still. A buckle I had designed. No, yeah, yeah. I'm thank sorry. you. I'm thank sorry. you for clarifying that, Larry. Sorry. Um, that comes later. <laughs> um, but I showed him the buckle. I said, see, you just press this piece of turquoise in the middle and the buckle pops open. He said, oh, I love it. <laughs> How much? I said, I don't know, three fifty. You know, and no tax for you, Mr. Lind, because you know, I'm just honored to have you wearing that buckle. He said, oh, I'm not going to wear it. It's for my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Quick curlace, you kidding me? <laughs> so for the next four years, Paul would pop his head in the store oh my God. when he got a new boyfriend. And he'd say, Jamie, need another buckle. <laughs> I said, quick release. He said, oh, you betcha. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And then when I started doing stand-up on my own, there was this crazy-ass guy in Key West named J.P. Bo. He's now the top Honda salesman in California. Hmm. He's out of San Diego. But uh, J.P. Bo put on this show, the Ed Sullivan Show. So the first Sunday of every month, that we do an Ed Sullivan Show in our theater. And this hippie Lloyd Mager would play Ed. He did a fairly decent job, but I'm doing a bad Ed now because this, he did kind of a fairly decent Ed. But he was the Ed. And the idea was Ed Sullivan didn't die. He just became a hippie and 
moved to Key West, to Key West. <laughs> living off the mangoes and the papayas and, you know, and um, so my girlfriend dared me to get up and do stand up one night and I did it. And that's that's what hooked me. Wow. Hooked me. The first 20 minutes worked. Second time I got up, it didn't work. But I still I persevered. I have yeah. a question. So. Yeah. So the beginning of the story of, of Mac and Jamie yeah. is that he heard you on the radio, left you a note. Thought he was funnier than me. And then you went and pursued him, you know, and then- well, I went and to then, his house, right. we had a beer and- But I mean, that, okay, we had a lot of laughs. so this is my question. Yep. In a world where everyone is more accessible and, you know, speaking of the internet, you, you can seek anyone out, you can see what they do, you can mm -hmm. reach them somehow because everyone has their email online. Don't you think that it's actually harder now? Meaning anyone who's going to reach out to you now on the internet, I think we're more likely to go, who are you? You just like and, it. You like it. Or move you just, on. exactly, yeah. you move on. Yeah. But, oh, somebody says something nice about me. I like it. I move yes, on. Yes. But that time where if if you really wanted something, you would have to take out a piece of paper, write a note, yeah. find the person, you know, put a note on their well, windshield or whatever. And I just think that said so much more. And that is now sort of a lost. Well, I, I wonder if that, if that, that physical act would mean more now than even it did then. Whereas, because he could have... Maybe. Because Jamie could have easily taken the note and gone, oh, nice. yeah, whatever. Right. Because if you were like most of the morning disc jockeys I know, you would have gone, want to bet you're funny and thrown it away. Right. Well, I saw Mac Dryden. Yeah. And I'd had his cartoon calendar. Oh, you yes. recognized okay. his so name. So I recognized his name and I knew that he was and funny. And you respected his work. Yeah. And right. there was a difference... We, we, between Mac and myself in 70s Key West yeah. because it was a laid back island and we were both very laid forward people. <laughs> so <laughs> if an opportunity came up for me like that to yeah. meet up with somebody yeah, yeah. who thought he was funny and then I realized that we could do a show together, a live show, oh my God, and I was really good friends. We had both acted in this Green Street Theater. Matter of fact, I, Tennessee Williams directed me in a production of Cabaret, Whoa. where I played Cliff Bradshaw, and then Mac played um, the, the the Nazi guy. I forget his name. <laughs> we'll just Aren't call him Heinz. Named Fritz. Uh, or Fritz. Fritz. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, uh, uh, Trump, something. <laughs> something like that. I know. Something like that, yeah. Uh, but anyway, then um, a friend of ours who was a, who become a waitress her mom was sick. She moved back to Fort Lauderdale. she became a waitress at the Comic Strip in Fort Lauderdale. The Comic Strip was a satellite club of the Comic Strip in New York, of course. And they would bring four or five comics down every week from New York, put them up in the comedy condo, and they'd hmm. play Fort Lauderdale. So Mac and uh, this, this girl called us and she said, Jamie, you guys are just as funny as anybody playing here. You guys ought to come up and work. Fort Lauderdale. We thought Fort Lauderdale, the big time. Oh, oh, oh. oh <laughs> man. You know, I don't know. I'm going to the, the city. Let's wear masks because of the to air. town. <laughs> yeah. So we went in and we were found ourselves on stage with Paul Reiser and Carol Liefer and oh, Rick Overton man. and Jerry Seinfeld and Eddie Murphy and, you know, all these people. And they all said, God, you guys ought to come to New York. There's nothing like you guys in New York. Because remember, we were trying to reinvent the comedy team. Yeah, right. It was mm -hmm. definitely out of fashion at yeah, that point. It was yeah. very out of fashion. Well, and I and say, we were, and we, oh, excuse me, but we had created our act in a vacuum. Yeah. Also, oh, that's a we good weren't, point. We weren't in the clubs you weren't working out our, our act. We were in Key West working yeah, out our right. act. Yeah. To a very specific audience. Do you think that was a, a good thing for you? It was that you a didn't, great that thing. That you didn't have the influence of we got like, to just what everybody else was it's doing? It's like homeschooling. So trippy. It <laughs> was like similar. No one picked on them. Right. Yeah. So I want to say this about Lisa's point. I think whether it's like the 70s version of LinkedIn, which is a note on your car. Sure. Or <laughs> the modern version, uh, which is all of a sudden you have like... 80 likes and they're all by the same person yeah so you're like stalker yeah, yeah. Um, no so whatever it is it's like it really is how the person presents and do you see a common chord like right. oh, I get this person I I love the way they compose this note to me it's it sounds like someone I would want to know right yeah, yeah. I, I wonder if if I like right now I there's somebody that I would like to collaborate with that um works in a similar industry than mine and no, and i you just I, have to ask me uh, <laughs> <laughs> should have said something before <sighs> yes larry 
<laughs> I have no idea how to respond Let's to that. It's not Lisa. Lisa. I, I feel forward. like I've listened back to these podcasts and I've been so mean to Lisa in the past. Oh, You're why mean to me now? too? Don't worry. I know, but I, you, I have no problem being mean to. <laughs> but Lisa, I, I feel like I hurt the your second feelings. Banana and you, sweetheart, please. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll contact you. Uh, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but look for a note on your car. But I'm actually writing, not handwriting, but I'm actually going to write a letter mm-hmm. because I know this person likes really vintage stuff. Um, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make a reference that I'm, I'm, I'm typing a letter to Tom Hanks on right. my, on my, <laughs> on your typewriter. But I, but I wonder, on your typewriter, then you're going to scan it. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> right. And email it to him because yes. I'm lazy. Mm-hmm. But I wonder, and, and I'm somebody who's in a position now at, at my radio station where I get people wanting to apply and, and want to reach out and want to connect. And I think that I, if I was in a position where somebody did something that was a touch more personal right. than, than email their resume or email a link to their you know, audio air check or something, that if mm-hmm. somebody sent me, and not a gift necessarily, but something that looks like they took an effort and also was trying to make more of a personal connection than just a random, here's my stuff. Right. I think I would take note of that. And, yeah. if it, and if it had the right quality to it, or if I knew who they were and I saw that there was effort there, I would probably pay more attention to that. What? Exactly. I, I just wonder if you actually would, honestly, because I just I feel like we live in a time now where we all assume somebody's being creepy or somebody is just bullshitting. Not if they present as I don't. cool. If they yeah. present as cool, I, I think then, you can recognize the yeah. difference. Yeah, I, I can. Cause, cause I I've issue had people, that paranoia. Yeah. I yeah. Just don't, I don't. Because I have there. had him. <laughs> No, I really Thank think you. you can tell, you can just tell by the way they the comport themselves or if they have a similar communication style to you. Right. And if, yeah. they, if their request is something that, that where they've shown an interest and they have similar interests and they might, and your interests might kind of like meld, you can, you can just tell. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, there listen, are people I where like... you just like, I mean, we, we've talked to when James was here and we talked about like that camaraderie that developed it was yeah. like you were hanging around premiere in a capacity that had nothing to do with what they were doing right and you can feel that i mean if you had gone over to max place jamie and you guys had had a great conversation but didn't spark you would have gone well it was cool to meet him i, I love his work but it wouldn't have been mm-hmm. let's become a Absolutely. team Absolutely, there is a palpable well, chemistry that we, happens. we actually didn't decide then to become a team yeah we decided to produce a show together yeah but you did and decide you wanted to work together. You felt like we you wanted were, to work together. You were, yes, you were compatible, but not too closely. <laughs> <laughs> because well, now he said, you know, he said, I said, well, I, w- I want to do a stand-up segment in the show, twenty minutes of stand-up, and and he said, oh, well, it's a sketch show, and I said, it's, it's okay, don't worry about it, and it worked out great. I, I killed, but the sketches killed too, yeah. right? And and he let me be part of the sketches, yeah. And I said, do you want to do some stand-up with me? He said, oh, no, I could never do that. I can be an actor. I can be in sketches. And the night that I was paid $50 to go to a strip club in Marathon, Florida, and my 1950 Lincoln starter was on the fritz. Now, if I'd have had the internet, I could have found a starter for that 1950 Lincoln. <laughs> or you could or have taken Uber. an Uber. <laughs> in yeah. Key West, I could, yeah, I could have taken an Uber. But Mac drove me up there, and he saw me get up in front of, like, 20 pirates that had been watching <laughs> naked women for hours and were really drunk, and I got him. Yeah. And on the way back, he said, uh, because I had been saying, let's go to Fort Lauderdale and do an act, and you know, and he finally said, yeah, okay. Oh, that's funny. I said, funny. yeah, okay, what? He said, if you can survive what you survived tonight, you can get us through anything. Yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. Wow. And that's, that's when we went up to Fort Lauderdale and wow. became a team. That's so wild. Yeah, it was wild. I it love was it. Wild ride. And then we went to New York, and a year later, we did our first Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Is there a clip so, of that anywhere? Not that we have to watch it now, but can people see that somewhere? I don't know. What? Is that online? The Is that Show? online? That your your appearance on the Tonight Show? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I try yeah. not to pick any clips that I probably don't have the rights to. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yes. Well, I can't imagine that the Carson organization would be litigious in any way. <laughs> no. This is that my straight face. I'm, hey, go- I'm going to be sued gonna- just for saying that. Right, well, you they let Paul Reiser say- do his movie. But you have to yeah. get permission. Yeah. Where's Johnny? Right. You have to yeah, you get what you don't want is to load something up on YouTube and then get that letter from YouTube that says you have a flag on your account. Right. Oh, oh here's, yeah. I know. here's something we probably won't get flagged over if okay. we look for the trailer to the movie Million Dollar Mystery. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> 
Million oh, dollar this misery. This is one of my favorite Mac and Jamie things. Jamie, that's where I met you guys. I know. I, I was know. on the set. I know. Premiere. Interviewing us yeah, in our pre- trailer. Oh, how funny. We were, where were we? We were at the London Bridge. In, we were at London Bridge, Lake Havasu. In Lake Havasu. Million Dollar Mystery was an them. attempt to kind of bring back that it's a mad, 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 mad exactly. world kind of thing. It's a it caper was, movie. But it, was, but, it, but, but it was littered with really actually fun comic people. Rick Who Overton's Rick in it. Oh, Kevin look at John. He found it. Yeah, Kevin, oh, Kevin Pollock's in it. All right, it. let's play How this. Much, oh, let's see. Oh, no. Four million bucks. Oh, Bob Bob yeah, four million bucks. I'm all ears. Eddie Deason. Four million hidden in four different places. Greatest poker places. player ever lived. A million in each place. Federal agents free. Ah, look at that. That was Jamie. A madcap race to riches. <laughs> they must be crazy. Sure, they're my folks. Million dollar mystery. They're all after a fortune, and nothing is going to stand in their way. You're under arrest! No. They're going after the money! There are millions hidden somewhere nearby. Okay, nobody move. And these wild and crazy people will do almost anything to find it. Is that Joe doing the voiceover? I was going to say, it would be... (laughs) Is that... I just talked over Jamie. Kevin Pollack. Rich Hall. Rich Hall. The most rewarding movie ever made. Million Dollar Mystery. So there's still three million dollars. I think that's I think that's enough. I think we have to ask Joe if that's him. I swear it sort of sounds like that. That was a long time ago. I I don't know if Joe was doing voiceovers. No, that was nineteen eighty seven. He did he did Fast Times at Richmond High as his first trailer. So you from Premiere went to interview them and then did you say did you invite them to Premiere? I don't think that moment. I think they I saw them again subsequently at the improv because they were doing a promotion for the movie and there's a lot of comics in the movie and I think then I thought these guys would be perfect to create content because we had Jeff Altman and Ronnie Shell and we had some really great comedians we needed comedians who could write and perform because we had to crank out so many bits Uh, per week as as you know and so Mac and Jamie they were just like gold I mean those guys just well the the great thing was that Mac and Jamie could come in every week and do new material every week that yeah. not not a lot of comedians can necessarily generate yeah, new news. stuff all the time. Mac just writes or topical and writes stuff. and He's writes. A, he a, cranks just a voracious it. writer. Yeah. Now, uh, I got to tell you the, my line about this million dollar mystery movie was I, some interviewer, it wasn't you, but somebody asked me about it and they said, do you think it's good? I said, well, let's put it this way. I, I don't think it's one of the best movies ever made. I, we were flying to New York for the premiere and they were showing it on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's that's an I indication. Think you, I think you guys are in. The, aren't you two in the final scene or something? I yes, said. we had to go back and re. We wrote the final scene oh, wow. because the movie wasn't working. Oh my and gosh! And the producer and uh, the director uh, Richard Fleischer, his last movie. This yeah, guy, his that last guy made film. a lot of stuff. And uh, his last movie with Jack Carlisle, who was uh, the DP, and. Um, uh, he said, "We don't have an ending for this. You got to write an ending for it." So we, you guys, had we, to write an ending. We had to write an ending for the movie, and we went to not uh, not Knott's Berry Farm. Maybe it was not. No, um, it was on what? The one up in Santa Clarita, Magic Mountain. Magic Mountain. Yeah. Thank you. Went to Magic Mountain and found a little bench. Yeah, and in front uh, of some water, right? Bench. Yeah. Why do I remember the last scene of Million know. Dollar Mystery? I think it was because. Mac was eating. I think it was because Mac it was, was on. It, I think there was, was a period eating. where it was on a premium cable channel for a while, just playing Maybe. one of those playing over and over again. Maybe. There's one funny scene where they can't fold the map, which is pretty universal. That was pretty. Funny. <laughs> Here, here's just yeah. one other interesting uh, tidbit Uh-oh. about Million Dollar Mystery. Uh-oh. It was a film, and when I say it was inspired by a, it's a Mad 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 yeah. World. They it, were basically ripping off. It's right, a Mad Mad yeah, Mad, Mad World. <laughs> um, it was released with a promotional tie-in for Gladlock brand bags. Oh, oh, wasn't there also a promotional tie-in where they had hidden money somewhere, Jamie? They had hidden money. It was in a bridge, and nobody could figure out where it was except this girl in Bakersfield figured out where the money was. It was in the bridge of the nose of the Statue of Liberty. Oh. And all the clues in the movie. Now, Dino De Laurentiis, in his infinite... He produced that? In his infamous wisdom, he <laughs> produced that. And he, he was driving in his limo in New York one night, and he saw a long line. And he pulled up, and he said, What the movie you are lining up for? And they said, uh, It's lottery tickets. We're buying lottery tickets. He said, Ah, lottery tickets. Genius. So he made a movie with clues hidden in it, 
But in those days, you had to pay every time you went to see the movie. So people would pay, you know, their nine dollars or eight dollars five or six times to go see this movie, and because that's where it there fell were apart. Because there clues hidden in it. Because there was clues hidden in the movie. Yeah. Oh. And this girl oh my figured gosh. out, and she got a brand new Camaro. 14-year-old Alicia Lene Jones of you, Bakersfield, Larry. California. Uh, Nicely got done. It. That's Nicely phenomenal. Done. All right, we're going to move on because, Jamie, yes. I understand you have a Nominated white... Nominated for Golden Raspberry Awards. Okay. Yeah, we were nominated for the Golden Raspberries, <laughs> okay. but we didn't win that year. Uh, I think so Halle Jamie. Berry got it. Oh, I'm for sorry. I'm yeah. sorry, oh, Jamie. <laughs> Jamie, you have a wife and kids? I do. Yes. I do. Not with me right now. Right, right. And your wife is... is Why so, do you act uh, so surprised, Wheezy? Well, because I'm supposed to be the interviewer, and I'm so, supposed to be discovering with you. But you know all right, this yes. stuff. But yeah. she's acting like yeah. she's discovering yeah, she, it. So I tell don't know. Your Let wife her act. Is a, his wife is a famous ice skating choreographer. Did you know this? Uh, no. It's insane, mm-hmm. yeah. His whole family's is, they're is all just, so they're, talented. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, it is and, ridiculous. And his, his wife, Sarah, and his daughter, Haley, is... A, she's... A pop star. I don't know how else. She's would a you... pop star and an actress. And an actress. And so, mm-hmm. if you if you um, click on the link for um, where it says, yeah, where, uh, where do you start? Where it says uh, Haley Kiyoko's parents. This is so funny. <laughs> you can actually Google Haley Kiyoko's parents and see pictures of Jamie and Sarah. This is yeah. The internet is very thorough. That's not good. Yeah, that's not there good. We go. Yeah, so one look, of them. Haley Kiyoko's there parents. So where does she and get... And there's Haley. Yeah, you and there's Haley. can't zoom in on any of that Where game. does she get the name Kyoko? Uh, that's her middle name. Mm-hmm. All of my kids have Japanese middle names because their mom's Japanese. Right. Canadian. Right. Uh, but uh, Japanese heritage. And um, so we just gave them all middle names that are Japanese. And we were sitting looking at her headshots once when she was 12. She had just done... Um, uh, oh, she was a spokesperson for Cinnamon Toast Crunch. That's what she was. Nice. On all the commercials. And uh, I looked at her headshot. I said, Haley Alcroft. I said, that just doesn't go with your looks. Because she is definitely the most Asian looking of my three children. And she said, I know, Dad. What am I going to do? I said, go with your middle name, Haley Kiyoko. She said, oh, I'm so happy you said that. I've been so afraid to ask oh you. Oh, my God. Really so, really sweet. so sweet. Aww. So she, um, she just started to set the world on fire. She started writing music when she was 12, and she was doing what? drum charts for the local music store when oh she was God, 12. Oh, my God. She's gorgeous. Yeah. And she just has kind of turned. And she's, I was telling uh, Louise before the show, that's not her. <laughs> That's not her right there. <laughs> Great someone haircut, with though. big hair. There she That's is. Haley. There she is. Yeah. Go ahead. They call her the uh, queer Jesus now. Oh, they do? Because she's such a hero in the LGBT community. Oh, wow. And all of her songs about, like her latest video is about her following a girl down the street and flirting with her. Because she she was tired of seeing guys following girls down the street flirting with them. <laughs> oh, right. And she, saw it, she said, well... She did this big article for Billboard magazine, this big interview from them. And she, and one of the main points was that, you know, she wants equality. And so she wants to be able to flirt with girls just the way guys flirt with girls. Right. And just the way girls flirt with guys. Right. And, you know, guys should be able to flirt with guys and girls should be able to flirt with girls. That's the world as it is today. Absolutely. And she, she has absolutely, uh, she has got such a fan base. Her last video is it 85 million, I think, views? Okay, so I have to tell it's you. crazy. My, Ron and I went with Jamie and Sarah to oh, yeah. see Haley in Santa Barbara with Jamie's other friends. And, um, okay, so so Haley is this beautiful, darling, half Caucasian, half Asian girl. And she's got her hair dyed very blonde right now. Okay, everyone in the audience looked like that oh, oh wow mm-hmm. they are all pulling full Haley's. does she ha- know- do her followers have a name like kiyokians, kiyokians. Oh. seriously nailed it is that true kiyokians yeah. that's yeah. awesome yeah that's wow. hysterical and so i bet does- if you if you googled Haley kyoko fans you will see a sea of these people it's the sweetest oh, thing, that's and they amazing. worship her they yeah. worship her they know every they word to every song no Everything. Every word to every song. What is it like watching your kid be worshipped by... I mean, she's got 509,000 Instagram followers. Like, what? that's... Well, you know, 
uh, a lot of people say, like when she was on CSI Cyber, she's a really great little actress. And um, she's a really great big actress, actually. And um, people would say, oh, you must be so proud. And for some reason, that word just kind of spun around on me. And uh, yeah, I am proud. But moreover, I'm happy she's living her dream. Yep. Now, when the cameramen and the grips come up to me and they say, we love Haley, she'll come and eat lunch with us. Hmm. You know, she's the only star that'll really talk to us. Wow. That's when I'm proud. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because I know that she's just a When you've raised a good, a good person. person. A great right. person. Yep. Yeah. That's when you're pr- oh, Now, the other times, I'm happy that she's living Absolutely. her dreams. I really am. She's got this TV series for Facebook coming up. Uh, it's uh, t- uh, Facebook's first TV series. Oh. Isn't and that exciting? Yes. It's called um, uh, Five Points, and Kerry Washington and Richard Abnett are producing it. And um, she's she's the lead. Wow. And it's quite a compelling story, but they're only going to be, well, maybe I shouldn't say this. I'm giving away too much, I think. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm, that's I'm gonna, okay. I'm going to let Facebook put out that's a- That's awesome, but that's amazing. Because everybody's watching this, and then the whole world will know. Right. Right. You could so, be leaking yeah. top secret right on Facebook right now. Exactly. Yeah. So oh, careful. Yeah, so we've just been flagged so, again. Oh, the, but it's exciting for her. And, and, uh, and my wife has a movie, I, Tanya, coming out. Oh, that, this is that really cool. I can't wait. Do you oh, know? she choreographed yes. it. Yes. I can't wait Can for this Can you stand movie. it? And no, I can't. She 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 told us uh, that she completely um, re not reimagined because it's the exact like she she twirl did twirl by twirl Tanya Harding's choreography a replica she, of wow. the exact choreography she aspect. did that year on Margot Robbie. That's what I was so going to ask. Did Margot with, Robbie actually do it? Yeah, she oh. well no well, well yeah some most most of it she, right. She worked with Margot for three months uh, on her skating. Okay, they worked up at Pickwick. And um, just every day they'd go in and she'd work with Margot. And Margot had been a hockey player. So she had some on. skills on skates. <laughs> and then Alice and Margot Jan- Robbie had been a hockey player. Yeah. And Alice and Janney had been a skater. That's why you put your skills in your resume. Exactly. Larry. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's right. right. <laughs> Ice hockey. That's what got her the part. Horseback riding. Oh, you, could have had. you could have been so playing cowboys man. for years. But anyway, um, Allison Janney plays her mom. I love her. I love I that worship. woman. I worship Real her too. Yeah. Janney. There's the, uh, there's yes. a, she's one of those that you see her in Oh, this. I Any, bet. I bet. Just the preview. I, I looked at my yeah. husband and I go, are you hilarious. kidding me with her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a genius. Allison Janney is one of those, you put her in your movie and the movie becomes that much better already. Yes. And, yeah. And, but then you give her a great role and she just knocks it out of the park. Yeah. And Margot Robbie knocks it out of the park too. Yeah, she looks great. She plays a tremendous Tanya Harding and... and her attitude. It's a dark comedy. Yeah. yeah. So explain it's, what the movie is, because some viewers may not remember this episode that was actual real life. It really did happen. Well, it was, back in the old as, days. It was as crazy as the Trump administration is uh, today. No, it was not. No. No. no, no nothing's as crazy. Sinner. It was. It was right. in a more innocent time when it was the only crazy thing that happened for the months. The only crazy thing that happened <laughs> as was opposed to something every day. That you would hire a hitman to bludgeon your skating rival. Yeah. Well, or, the hitman was actually yeah, originally hired to take her out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But he had a heart of gold. So, <laughs> he, so he kneecapped her. So he just kneecapped but he just her. Kneecapped her. Yeah. Uh, you that, might be interested to know <laughs> yes. that many years before this movie, I was in Julie Brown's version yeah. of uh, that story. Right. Stop the train. I called oh, really? The Attack yeah. of the Five Foot Two Woman. Yeah. It was yeah. a right? uh it was a what's it called? A um oh gosh, what were those parody movies? A mockumentary? No, no, no. Uh oh Lord. Uh you're looking at me like I know, I, know I just feel like about. I felt I was trying to by osmosis. So who did you play? I just played a, a random ice skater. Okay. I, okay. But it was my first so you part skate in too. anything. To know. I stood in skates. Actually, I did take yeah. ice skating lessons at the Topanga Mall when I was um, oh like, like 11. <laughs> uh-huh. And Steve Garvey's daughters were in the class right after me. So oh we god. used to go like, oh my god, there's Steve Garvey. Oh. <laughs> yeah. T- Topanga Mall's awesome. It was so amazing. Topanga and I also worked, awesome. I worked at Pretzels and Cheese after that. <laughs> of course you did. I swear <laughs> to god I did. Um, so Jamie, when can people see National the National Lampoon. When can people see the uh, National oh, Lampoon. Pat. Thank you. Oh, I knew that. if you started talking, you. it yes. would just rise to the surface. <laughs> you know. She was Googling. Yeah. In my head. Internally That's what happens. Googling. Exactly. It, was, it was mind Google. 
It was Eternal Google. <laughs> Sorry, you were asking when the movie's when, coming When out. can people find the Tanya Hardy? What is it called? Uh, well, I know we're going to- I, Tanya. I, Tanya. I, Tanya. Okay. And I know we're going to the premiere on December 8th. Are we it's all like, invited? We're all we're going. All, well, said I said we. we. Oh, good. All of us. I, I can actually tell you, I believe that it opens on the week of the 4th, which would be Friday the what? Uh, the, uh, I'm not 8th, good at math, Larry. The eighth, Four, five, Friday the eighth, six, seven, eight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I believe the eighth. It okay. is. It would be the eighth. So before yeah. before we get, uh, uh, I mean, jump forward to Jamie's recent traumatic heart surgery, nope. of which let's, let's mention something about Sarah first. She also Sarah. choreographed Blades of Glory. My wife. She yeah. did, oh, and wow. she did Scott Hamilton's entire professional career. Oh, and my Dorothy gosh. Hamill and Peggy Fleming and Ty and Randy. Ty and Randy, and she's the only ice skater with two Emmys. For and her she's work. the sweetest, strongest person in the world. And very humble. That is the cool. I, that is seriously super she's so cool. cool. Super yeah. cool. Look her up, and if if you, any of you are ice skating fans, look up Fields of Gold. Um, Michelle Kwan skated it in her uh, performance program at the Olympics. No, Sting did. And, You're lying. And my wife, no, she <laughs> skated to it. Oh, I see. Sorry. And <laughs> and your wife choreographed that? And it's probably one of her best pieces So say your, ni- or your wife has a professional name. Sarah Kawahara. Kawahara. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Kawahara. Jamie. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Let's add. Uh, Jamie has two other kids, and they're great, too. Oh, he has Thatcher <laughs> oh, yeah. and Elise. Now let's move on. Fantastic. My son Thatcher is 24 <laughs> now. and just So handsome. One of the greatest guys in the world. Awesome. One of the sweetest men. And um, my daughter, Elise, is 30, and she works at Nickelodeon. And she's fantastic. I just figured we got to give the kids a little you bit do. of extra time. You do. Yeah. And so Jamie's, Jamie has a new partner. And he does a sh- uh, YouTube show called Boomers on a Bench. Yeah. And his new partner, <laughs> go ahead and, and tell, I mean, I know this is going to make Mac jealous. Mac, time to turn away. Well, right, before ahead. before I say this, I had lunch with Mac two weeks ago. And there, I don't think there's ever been a comedy team that's broken up or parted ways so amicably mm-hmm. as Mac and myself. Uh, it was so amicable. I saved the emails we wrote each other when we decided to call it quits. <laughs> And they're inspirational. It's just really great. That's so sweet. we're still best friends and family. You know, that's amazing. Really amazing. How long did you work together before you? Forty years. Oh, Literally yeah. forty. It's, it's yeah. a marriage. Forty years. Forty. Four zero. That's unreal. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Wow. Forty years of funny. Dear but, Lord. So anyway, so I went to see my friend Phil Proctor, uh, who was one of the members of Fire, Fire Sign Theater. Theater. And uh, Phil and I have been friends ever since I got to L.A. in the 80s. Uh, but we really didn't hang out much together. But he invited me to the show. He said, I'm doing a show at the Antius. I think you're really going to like it. And uh, I went, and we had a drink afterwards. And he said, well, you know, I'm retired now, and Peter Bergman passed away from cancer, and uh, his other Fire Sign players weren't uh, in great health. And uh, Phil's you know, in his mid seventies and in great health, and uh, he said, "I'm I'm just bored being retired." And I said, "Me too. I'm bored out of my gourd." I said, "Let's do something together." He said, "What could we do?" I said, "Well, we could sit on the bench and read out of the newspaper to each other and do <laughs> and do funny stories that are happening and just come up with all kinds of stream of consciousness stuff." And he said, "Oh, I just," he said, "I just can't remember lines like I used to." I said, "We have the newspapers." We just tape the scripts <laughs> inside the newspapers, oh, that's and nobody's awesome. going to know any different. Genius. So that's what we did, and we did over a hundred episodes of that on YouTube. All right, so we Boomers have one. on a bench. Oh, we, we have, have one. Boomers on a bench. Let's play some of this. Oh, there's your, <laughs> there's your cheat sheet. You kidding me? I live with one. <laughs> no, I mean the music awards, if you can call it music. Yeah. I really miss the old rock bands, you know. This rapping and hip hop stuff is for the birds. You no, know, but the birds, huh? Yeah. Roger McGuinn. Oh. Chris Hillman, Graham Parsons, their drummer, Gene Clark. Wow. Whose drummer was Keith Moon? Yes, he was. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. <laughs> got what? No, uh, what's with the Rolling Stones? I don't care about the Rolling Stones. Whose drummer is Keith Moon? Yes, until he met an untimely death. <laughs> Where? Where? Oh, Bob, yeah, he was with the uh, Grateful Dead. <laughs> the Grateful Dead, yeah, yeah. Where was the best guitarist in the world? Where? That's what I'm asking. With the dead. I love them. <laughs> what did you love about them? Them? Are you kidding me? G L O R I A. I can spell. 
Van Morrison, uh, Ronnie Mullins played drums. For who? Keith Moon until <laughs> he died. Oh, oh, you'll have to oh, go online to watch the rest of that. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Boomers on a bench, and you just type in Boomers on a bench, and you'll find it, right? Yep, Boomers on a bench. So now we, we have to get to something very important, because okay. Jamie has been sitting upright and taking fluids. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm ambulatory. <laughs> for the last 45 and cognitive. minutes. Yeah. Relatively cognitive. But you you, you would barely cognitive. know it. You would barely know this, but I two didn't... months ago, he received a full heart and liver transplant. That's insane. Yes. Only t- eight short weeks ago? Yes. Eight weeks ago. His chest yep. was cracked open Dude, on an operating table. It's still damn near cracked open. <gasps> yeah, I, I, look know at people, people. I know people who had t- bunion surgery who aren't up and around They're after. Not. And don't look as good not. as he does. Seriously. Do yeah, it's, what? It's great. The hell? Yeah. Well, I had a bad heart, and I knew I had a bad heart. For how long? Most of my life. Really? Yeah. And um, it was, well, I got a history in the family of widow makers. And my uncle had a widowmaker, my grandfather had a widowmaker, and a widowmaker is where a, uh, a wall in your artery bursts, and your body thinks it's a heart attack, so it sends all the plaque to that artery, but that artery is supplying the heart with blood. Oh, oh my so God. You're supposed to drop dead. Yeah. And I was one out of four who didn't drop dead. I was on an airplane, and I had symptoms, and we had just taken off from Seattle, so the emergency landed me in Portland. And the next day at the hospital in Portland, there must have been 30 doctors come in to see me. And I said to my attendant, I said, I said, this, this hospital is incredible. I've been getting <laughs> so much attention. He said, well, Mr. Alcroft, you had the Widowmaker. We don't get to talk to you guys very yeah. often. Oh, wow. So they were wow. interviewing me for wow. that. So that was 12 years ago. And it reduced my heart function to 25%. So I was living on 25% for 12 years and doing just fine, right? Oh, I, Normal I, human being. I, no one Normal. Knew. And um, then about mid-July, when I laid down, I started running out of breath. And I'm telling you this because if anybody else is out there, yeah. and they're laying down and they run out of breath and actually have to sleep sitting up in a chair mm. like I did for two weeks. And I lost my appetite. And those are two very, very strong, very vital symptoms of congestive heart failure. Wow. So I went to my doctor and I, <laughs> I said... <laughs> I said, well, I think I better be tested. I said, I'm feeling really lousy. And he said, well, you are no longer at 25%. He said, you are now at 10% or below. Oh, my God. I said, what the hell am I going to do? I use different language, but Mm -hmm. what the hell am I going to do? And he said, well, you're going to get yourself the hell down to cedar (laughs) cyanide right now. So I just, my sister was with me. She just drove me down to Cedars. I checked in and I was there for 82 days. Oh my God. I was only there for two months before they found a heart and a liver for me. Now, you would think the liver was shot because of my excessive drinking in comedy clubs. Sure. (laughs) But it was apparently heart induced cirrhosis. Oh, oh, wow. Because your heart and your liver are so interconnected. One pumps the blood, the other cleans the blood. So when your heart's not functioning properly at 25%, it's going to affect. It was beating up on the liver. Yeah. So they said, so we got to replace them both, oh. Mr. Alcroft. And it, oh it, it, now, and how you often be, does that happen where you have to replace two well, vital I, organs? Well, I am one of 220 people in the United States with dual transplant. Wow. According to the doctors. Yeah. Uh, or, well, he was a maintenance guy that <laughs> just passing through the room. But, <laughs> but they, they he know, seemed to know what he was talking they about. Know well stuff. Really they know did. their they stuff. They know their stuff. They know their stuff. He'd been, he'd been at that hospital for 35 years. Yeah. So. He's, heard, pick, he's, heard, some, he's heard some things. Yeah, yeah, I had doctors that had only been there three years. So. <laughs> right, absolutely. So he knew more. Go with the trust. seniority. Yeah. 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 So, and, and I tried, and you know something? I was in the hospital for two months, and a lot of people wait for 16 months for two years. A lot of people die. 20 people die a day in America waiting for an organ. Wow. So get out there and fill out your donor card. Yes. And if they want you to go skydiving with them on the weekend, go. <laughs> you know, just pack your own chute. <laughs> Definitely pack your own chute. Absolutely. Shoot. But, uh, you know, the donorship level in this country is abysmal. And so I'm writing a book right now called The Tin Man Diaries. I started it when I was in the hospital. And I posted on Facebook. And I kind of took my friends and family along on the journey with me and people have just reached out to me and said thank you for taking us along on this it's been such a ride and wow and, and i you know throw some humor in there and and uh, so i'm going to take the tin man diaries publish it go on a speaking tour oh, around the country to promote donorship and anybody who comes beautiful. to the meeting has to fill out a donor card 
or else I'll nice. kill him. Great. Wait, so can uh, I ask you a couple questions? No. Okay. But can yeah. you tell no, people? Go ahead. Can you tell? I, I, first, I, I, can you tell yeah. people where they can read this, and then she can ask her questions? Uh, it's not out yet. Okay. Uh, you if can, you would have been listening, you would have known he's still writing it. I search. Well, I thought, well on his I, Facebook page. Uh, it's on my Facebook page. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the Tin Man Diaries. <laughs> okay. Right. These are my questions. I'm going to ask them all at once, so you can just answer. Don't them make all. me pull this car over you. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Uh, were the heart and liver from the same person? Yes, they have to be. Oh, they have to be. Mm -hmm. Would if, okay, so if that person's liver had been damaged, would they have still done your, oh no, they could, so you, it had to be, they both had to be from the same person. They had to be from the same person. They told me that the liver was high risk. Wow. Which means that they didn't have any medical records on the guy. Ooh. So, I don't know. So far, so good. Yeah. They say it's it's doing great. They say my Heart's doing great. Now, I was working at 25% for years. I'm now at 65% oh, wow. my, which, with this new heart. And it's a 46-year-old heart. Wow. So I'm 46 going on 68. I love it. You know? Wow. So had had those not come through within two months, you would have been in the hospital until... I would have still until. been there, and I could have been dead. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, actually, once I was in the hospital, they would have kept me alive till a heart and kidney got there. But they did say, stay here. Right. Yeah. Don't, Don't go home. Don't go home. Yeah, because he lived. He lived there. He, he to, had right. his dog Henry was um, a certified service dog, so yeah. Henry could be there. He could visit. Oh, he yeah. was there. Yeah. He lived there. Family Aww. there. It was great. So, was great. Wi will there be a time when you meet the family of the person who? No. Never. Explain how this works because okay. I found this very interesting. Go ahead. Um, what happens is, uh, if the family of the deceased wants to contact the recipient, they uh, can. Okay. They're allowed to. And if they do, then the recipient, uh, it's incumbent upon us to write a letter of thank you to the family. Okay. Whether we have a relationship with that family from that point on is totally up to us and the family. I choose not to because um, I was told by one of the heart recipients that, you know, they come in and they talk to you, the people that have had it for six years and stuff. Right. And they say, well, I met the family and I went to a family picnic and, you know, everything I did was what Brian did. <laughs> you know, and I kind of lost my, oh, you picked the celery out of you. Marlene, look at that. He's picking the celery out of his potato salad. Brian did that. Oh, <clears throat> my you know. God. And if Brian was a, a Norwegian left-handed Trump supporter, that wouldn't have made me a Norwegian left-handed no. no. fool. Right. Right. Oh, Interesting. So, yeah. That's that, really It's a weird dynamic now that you think about it. Yeah. Because it all comes from the brain. Yeah. Now, we relate to our heart because I think mm -hmm. that's the spiritual chakra. Right. That's, that's, we feel stuff from there. And I think that's really just the, the, the chakras yeah. lining up and, and this is how we're feeling, you know, the energy in our bodies. It's our spiritual center, perhaps. Right. Um, but, and this may be our intellectual center, but... When it comes right down to it, this is our spiritual sure, center, too. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, it, and it was interesting to me, they gave me a heart-shaped pillow, and they said, hold this against you, it'll feel really good. And it really did, because they cut you here, and there, and there. It's a, they call them Mercedes. I like to think of it as a peace sign. Yeah. <laughs> do, you wanna, <laughs> do you want to show your scars? They call, no, they're, I don't They're pretty impressive. Show. They are impressive. Okay, so I don't know. No, show okay, we don't. Uh, you don't want to see. There's, it does look like there's a people out there with it's weak awesome. stomachs. Yeah, someone's eating. Someone's yeah, eating. someone is eating somewhere. Um, but anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, the scar. Oh, the, the pillow, scar. and the pillow's shaped like that commercial heart shape. It's not yeah. shaped yeah, like a real right. heart, you know. But they found that that shape is the most comforting to heart recipients. Wow. And I thought, eh, isn't that interesting that wow. the commercialization of the heart shape is actually the perfect shape for it's comfort. Like, that's and wild. I actually, when I first got out and I couldn't drive, I can drive now, um, I would put the pillow between my uh, seatbelt and my chest and it just felt great. Oh, wow. Aww. Now you can't so feel like great just two weeks after. You well, still... I can't feel my heart. Yeah, you're they still They disconnect working. the nerves. Oh, wow. And unless... Um, some miracle happens down the road, I'll be able to feel my heartbeat again, yeah. but I can't feel my heartbeat. Wow. You know, what? that, that I don't thing even, where you I don't feel it. Get yeah. it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So well, that's you interesting because, you, you know, like that. if you have a C section, you kind of get numb around here. Yes, yeah. that's true. So, boys, why don't you take a seat because we're going to do the fun part of the show wow, and wow, you guys wow. can oh um, my God. take part. I, I, mean, I want to talk to Jamie about that for so another three donate, hours. I can't donate, wait to donate, read that book. Donate, donate, donate. donate, donate. So what, do Put we the know, pink sticker on your license. Yeah, do we know yeah. the best place to go to get information on that? DMV. Cedars, uh, and also... 
please, hats off to Cedar Sinai who saved this man's life. That is yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Thank you. miraculous. That's and he's going to make you proud. Oh, I will, I will so never happy call you. For you. Seizures cyanide again. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to update a lot of Facebook posts. Yeah, I know. Uh, so things we found online. I was thinking that since it's holiday season, that and everybody starts uh, branding their ad with makes a great gift. And some of this stuff does not really make a great gift. So I did what Larry did. I started Googling the thing I would love to that there that there should be online. And right. usually it's there. Yeah, it's, it's so, almost always there. Yeah. Which is also bad news if you want to invent something because somebody's done Someone's it. Someone's already, you have to do dot .tv or something. <laughs> uh, but so did click on the um i forget what i labeled it on your guys's um, printout but it's like doesn't make a great gift or something like that yeah i, I googled that today. someone created a a blog <laughs> and uh with handy uh a pull down menu of of things that actually aren't the greatest gift but probably some people will be getting that do you see that john it should be near the bottom under things we found online while he's looking, let's yeah. sing a Christmas song. Want to? <laughs> here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. Where is that? I don't know any more of the lyrics. I don't know why I picked that one. Because it's probably let's keep singing, you know sing, 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 <laughs> sing. No one really song knows the song. No one knows any lyrics past the title of yeah. a Christmas no, song. No, there are other songs that, like, Garrett and I know almost all the lyrics to. What do you to. know, Garrett? See, once you're on the spot, it's like impossible. Greeting cards have all been sent. What's the favorite uh, Christmas carol or a Christmas song for Jews? Which one do they like the most? We like all the ones written by Jews. Brisket, which is yeah, awesome. like on Irving, an open Br- fire. Like all the Irving, Irving Berlin, Berlin ones. Songs. Yeah. White Christmas. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, White Christmas was my favorite song yeah. growing up. My favorite Christmas song. Yeah. Uh, I really like Kelly Clarkson's uh, Christmas song. Yeah, that's a great. It's a new Christmas song, which you never. Nobody makes that good. A, nobody a does song that or a yeah. suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> it's a song. You got the link, guys. <laughs> All right. So I this like is Burl, Burl really god awful. So you can get eyelashes for your headlights, <laughs> which I do see a lot on the road, and they make mm-hmm. me happy you personally. Do? Okay. Yes. Really? Yeah. Now I'm gonna let Garrett and Jasper pick what you want us to click on. There's a Santa toilet seat cover. There's a there's a there's a bearded. Jasper, you got one. Winter wear. I've seen that. You've seen that. Have you seen the the mustache for your car? But that's for Lyft. That's Lyft for, drivers use no, that. Uh, I do, yeah. The, the Obama Chia Pet? Terrible. Oh, no. Should we go to the next page? No, wait. What's the vest? What's the vest yeah, with like, all click the on stuff? The vest. Click on the vest. Yeah, that's uh, the utility vest. There's I a bet. lot going on there. Oh, it's it's for hanging your Christmas tools. ornaments. You have tools. all your tools yeah. right there. That's not terrible. It's not terrible. That's pretty cool, actually. That's pretty cool? Okay. It's it, well, it yeah, once useful. a year. I mean, it's not fashionable, but no. <laughs> Garrett and Russ hung up all our Christmas lights. But it's a couple for days once ago. a year, so you're not going to remember where you put it. Uh, you put the, it in with your Christmas decorations. All right. What is there like a, a hand warmer for what your keyboard? Right, it says, <gasps> it says keyboard quiet cover. Oh. Shut up. Oh, so you can tippy tappy quietly. That's it's terrible. The best way to. <gasps> to break into your spouse's Facebook late at night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that makes me very claustrophobic. Yeah, it also could be cozy. No. No? Wrong. The Thanko keyboard quiet cover. That seems weird. It seems silly. All right, what else you got, John? Uh, let's go to page two. Page two, quick. okay. <laughs> oh, good idea. Good idea. Forward thinking. Anything looking good? Why What's, is that guy picking his own nose? That's what I want to know. All right, pick. He's click picking on the his. Guy. No, he's cleaning his it's nose. A big hair. Hair. He's, he's got is a finger. It, a it's a nose hair, hair trimmer, trimmer that looks like a <gasps> finger. <gasps> that uh, is disgusting. Mm-hmm. But isn't it also awesome? No. The only a little, that, I think that, it's a little awesome. Do you? Yeah. That so, doesn't go over the line of like it could have been funny, but then you went and made it, and now it's disgusting. Yeah, but. Yes. So how, absolutely. How, no, but I'm going to say no. That the guy posing for the picture, the model, could have been like more whimsical about it. <laughs> I think he should have been more like, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, some sort of expression to indicate that there's a large finger no. going up. But that's the only pose that guy does. The mechanics I, of it. The mechanics of it. How does he actually like? He's got a tw- little twisty thing on the bottom. Right. That how it, yeah. That's how you that's, turn that it gets on. That gets that baby mm-hmm. going. That is disgusting. I still want that. I'll get it. That's for you a Christmas, Christmas fail right there. What's the one that says no. "and the winner is"? What's that? Are you sure you want to click on this? Let's I see. I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. uh, what is it? It's just a card with. Uh, it says, "Well, we have two winners: my pet fat and cornbread." 
The coin bread post received the most fit. Oh, it's it's in relation to some oh. other um, Is this just entries. It looks winnings like winnings for random things. I think so. Yeah, they had a contest for the. Uh, the, the, I see a pearl necklace for a pug. I, oh, was that what okay, that was? yeah. We have to end with a doggy. Yes. <laughs> okay, this is going to be clean, right? Okay. We have to end with a doggy. I can't guarantee anything at this point. Used broken, <laughs> used broken necklace. Yeah. Okay. That's there's definitely. Always a catch. There's always a catch. <laughs> That's definitely a bad gift. All right. So, and then Lisa, you had a pick. Do you guys have Lisa's link? Because Lisa, you can set this up. I think I only sent it to you, Louise. Should I, I forward what, it? What okay. is? Oh. <clears throat> so okay. I was on Facebook today, and I am constantly trying to avoid any actual news because it makes me cry. It's disturbing. So instead, I clicked on this link called um, Kalen Reacts. Okay. And it's just this guy reacting <laughs> to mostly cooking videos. Okay. <laughs> and the thing about it is, you just want to be his friend. You just want to be in really? his life. It's not just here. You go. So he just puts one camera on himself yes. and then watches stuff yeah. and then That's posts so it. I never heard of that. Hold on. Okay, I do light milk Sounds in my off. mac and cheese. It makes it really creamy. Yeah. That's a roux. I ain't never heard of that. Okay, I do light milk in my mac and cheese. It makes it really creamy. Good point. Good point. <laughs> Oh, girl, you just dropped that whisk in that pie. Well, that's unsanitary. I don't know if I can eat after her. I instantly trust his opinions. Yeah. I do, too. I See, I would just sit and listen to that all, all day. night. Yeah. What's great is he's really only half awake, so it's very yes. raw and no, it's, real. It's but, wait, of, watch but also oh, kind of okay. soothing. But, yeah, he's soothing and, and funny, and but also just, like, isn't trying at all. Right. And I completely agree with everything like at the end of that clip <laughs> she's making like unbelievable looking mac and cheese right. and he's like "Ooh, that looks really actually fantastic and then it, i guess it's a thanksgiving leftover mac and cheese so they start putting in yams and brussels sprouts oh my and he God. gets so Excited. angry oh he gets no, angry he gets so he's like he just gets very you mad. Just, you don't go there. You don't do that. Yeah. And then they put some cornbread topping on top, and, and he was like, okay, but then they didn't put it in the oven, and that made him even more mad. I see. You just watch him. So he has opinions. That's the black person that they got, though. Oh! Oh, he's upset. Oh, Jesus. Y'all didn't even put it in the oven. I should have known this was going to be some That's just delightful. <laughs> Every oh. video made me laugh. Yeah, and he looks hungry. <laughs> he does look hungry. <laughs> he might be. I think he is, yeah. Garrett. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Either way. He's, yeah, very he's got sleepy. one of those keyboard covers under the covers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh, do so, you have t time for something I have? Yeah, too? Uh, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to mention this real quick. I, I watched, uh, actually, Charlotte watched it before I did, and she said I had to watch it too, and, and she was right. Uh, Jim and Andy, gr The Great Beyond is a documentary on Netflix with a uh, footage shot while Jim Carrey was shooting <gasps> the movie Man in the Moon. I have watched mm -hmm. half of it. Uh, Whoa. And it is both a history of Andy Kaufman uh, in conjunction with basically Jim who, if you remember that movie, he essentially channeled he Andy. Did you ever Andy. encounter mm -hmm. Andy Kaufman? In, uh, or? Oh, yes. <gasps> yeah. I you have a Jamie. really good Andy Kaufman story. Yeah. Um, I don't have a good one. <laughs> okay. I, I do. I, I do. mean, there I were... encountered Andy Kaufman when I was an intern on the John Davidson talk show. And he was debating whether or not he should let some professional wrestler, because he had been wrestling his, women. This was his wrestling right. period. And right. for some reason, the producers of, of uh, the John Davidson show were in... The, the main producer's office, Vince Calandra, and they were trying to talk Andy out of actually wrestling a professional wrestler. Right. And there was a moment where he looked right at me and asked me what he should do. <laughs> and I'm like an, a page slash intern, like age 20, and I go, I don't think you should do it. And I looked right into his eyes, and his eyes were just like kind of like... I'm not really listening to you because Shaking. I'm going to do it. Oh, yeah. my God. And he got dropped on his head. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Well, that was Lawler, right? Jerry Lawler? I don't that, remember. Yeah. I just Jerry remember Lawler. trying to tell him not to do it yeah. like I had any say. Who played you in the movie? Who played me in the movie? I think it was <laughs> Tina Fey. Okay. Yeah. Well, the the the, well. the documentary is pretty good. Did you want to say yeah, something, Jamie? Yeah. Did you have Jamie? an Andy Kaufman story? I, he uh, wrestled a waitress at the uh, comic strip in Fort Lauderdale yeah. and hurt her. Yeah. Oh, he dislocated no. her shoulder. <gasps> yeah. And um, 
I relocated it for her. You did? And then I took him outside. Wow. Wow, Jamie. Yeah. You kicked him out of the club. Or did you beat him up? No, I didn't. No, I never came to that, but it was nose to nose. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. With Andy. Was like, I was I so angry that funny. he had abused his artistic privilege of being on stage to entertain a group of people. See, that- And he had abused that privilege by doing nothing but... A faux wrestling this waitress who he actually got violent with. Wow. Yeah. See, and that's an interesting aspect of, an, of, an excuse. of his, you know, whatever his creative art was, which is a, a big part of what this documentary is about, uh, with Jim Carrey kind of talking about his life right now, which has turned kind of very strange, mm-hmm. and he's yeah. kind of taken himself off the grid quite a bit mm-hmm. after a a, a huge peak and that sort of thing. Because remember when we were talking to Wankus, he wanted yeah. Jim Carrey to play uh, George Jones. Right. And he had him lined up and then and then Jim Carrey was like, I can't do anything right now. I'm working on myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and comedians who come from a very particular work ethic and background and... and, and yeah, believe you know, it or material. not, we do have a work ethic. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the, you do. And and they there is a, a clear division in what Andy did. Was it it, was it comedy? Was it something else? Was it performance, performance art? art yeah. Was it something that he was striving for that was just playing a big joke on people, or did it? Did, was it something about getting a reaction from people? Can I say um, something that may be controversial, but I don't know if it's been said about about Andy? Possibly, is it possible that he was on an autism spectrum? I, I mm-hmm. think it's certainly possible, and Very probably possible. at a time when that wasn't really talked about. Definitely that much. Asperger's. But what? Yeah. But what? What I? What it got me into was a bit of a rabbit hole of uh, so many things I could find online because I do remember as a comedy fan, and also I don't know how many people know this, but Andy was a featured. Uh, act on the very first Saturday Night yes. Live, uh, mm-hmm. which was a very odd show if you ever watch it. Mm-hmm. At that show, if you listen to the crowd and they recreate this in Man on in the, the Moon, film, sure. um, the the audience goes bananas. Yeah, because it's hilarious. So there's something there that I can't articulate. But right. if you go back and kind of find some of this before he took that turn into just kind of really rubbing people the wrong yeah. way and mm-hmm. kind of and having Being this obnoxious. other thing well yeah. his thing um, was like if you if if your thing is shocking people and you have to you know keep reinventing yourself as artists do right. all he knew how to do was to shock them more and more and more each time yeah. and it got to the point where he was harming people yeah i i I'm, would assume that was a that he had a a mental disease do you know what i mean like i i don't think that that I don't think any human who doesn't have something um, wrong uh, could continue to push themselves that way. Do you know what I mean? Like, I I would not think it was Asperger's or something like that. I I would think that he actually had something something like a, much much more serious. Like you know, like a lot of like a lot of kind of like um, mood disorder types of things. Yes. You're on a few different spectrums, and the way that they intersect is what right. creates your personality. Well, look, a lot of "Quote unquote artists have been also called mad and and sure. insane, and uh, Louise is Put right in hands. there with them. I Anybody? I probably <laughs> you know say that about you twice the a essence, week. The essence is I I don't uh, I'm a bit of a prude when it comes to art. Yeah, um, a bit of a purist maybe is a better word. Um, and Michael Medved, who I don't agree with in a lot of things, did say something once. He said that um, shock value has replaced inspiration in the arts. And I think across the board, we've lived through that, yeah. where shock value is replacing inspiration across the earth. Now, Andy Warhol was shocking, but also inspiring, Yeah, you know, even in his day. But now people get up and they can do anything and call it art. And I, I, I got a little bit of problem with that because any, any, and, and, and it's the kind of thing where, well, I work so hard for my art. <laughs> How's that person getting away with that? Right, right. right. You know, but it well, just, I, I think I, my I, point with this was I don't know that there is a whole generation who is going to have any idea who Andy Kaufman is, either from you know the the movie or the fact yeah. that what he did mm-hmm. that really resonated, especially during this period with SNL and stuff, um, it really 
did have an impact on people from the standpoint of trying in a different way, the way you and, and Mac tried, you know, well, duo comedy in a different way. The way Steve Martin reinvented Ex- comedy. Exactly. Right. And I think you that um, what this proves to me is that if you can go and find some of this early stuff, that um, you can be odd and you can be unique, We're and you, but there is still a way to do it that can get the audience with you mm-hmm. and not against you. Yes. And not yes. sure. Sure. exactly. Um, and I and that Mickey Mouse thing, there is such an innocence and yeah. sweetness to it yeah. where he doesn't say a word and yes. literally has no act. And somehow, and I still watch that and I, still, I still get but that. But even his character on Taxi resonated, I, I think, mm-hmm. because of the innocence right. of that. And come on, mm-hmm. nobody would have thought that somebody could get away doing that accent and mm-hmm. that ridiculous character. But he, I think he did it so believably and so beautifully sincere. and sincerely yeah. that you just bought it. There was yeah. something very sweet about it. You're yeah, right. but I You're definitely right. think something happened later on yeah. that just... So his early stuff is on the internet and that was the kind of thing I found online this but week. But the was, documentary is about Jim Carrey the, playing the part? Is, it's both. The one on okay. Netflix. The it's one a, on yeah, Netflix. Right. It's both their histories, how they intertwine, and this and all of this footage they shot on the set of Jim, who never stopped being Andy. Wow. Or was that a bit of a prank that was played on mm-hmm. us? And there is a question about that if you yeah. watch it all the way through to the end. It is called Jim and Andy, The Great Beyond. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you. And with that, I want to thank everyone for being with us. Garrett, Jasper, Larry Morgan, Lisa Arch, Jamie Elcroft. Oh, it was a pleasure. Jamie, we thank you, Louise. Thank My thank gosh, you, Larry. Jamie. Please like and subscribe. Because we love being your new favorite podcast. Yeah! Bye.